So thank you so much for that very extensive talk um, discussing the kinds of attitudes we should adopt in terms of growing with AI. Um, and so last but certainly not least, I would like to introduce Dr. Jamar Montgomery, who is a highly respected interdisciplinary individual known for his comprehensive background in politics, law, technology, and education. Having previously run for the U.S. Senate for the state of Louisiana and served as a juvenile public defender, Dr. Montgomery possesses a keen understanding of how policies really impact communities and individuals across the nation. He's deeply passionate about raising awareness on both the potential and the risks of the real world applications of AI in modern society. And so without further ado, please give a very warm welcome to Dr. Jamar Montgomery. That was one hell of an introduction right there. Um, before we get started, uh, my wife told me, don't get up here and bore these people with a long, boring speech. So, you know, the best stories start off with, so I was at this Illuminati party. All right, let's go. So, I'm at the World Economic Forum, and I'm speaking with the global elite about AI. And I started getting upset because they're talking about AI as if it's somewhere out there, as if AI isn't already affecting our lives. And I'm sitting here, hmm, you got some of the world's top companies, companies like Palantir, Google, that are there. Companies that are working with special operations to help, to hunt terrorists, to fight against crime, to do all these great things in society, being able to identify people who are going to hurt you. And then I started thinking, goodness gracious, this, this is big brother. This is technology that can be used in a way that discriminates against people, as in what we call predictive policing, which is used currently in New Orleans and Miami. Utilizing this technology in such a way where instead of you being the gears, we now become the grease of a machine that's much bigger than us much more powerful than us. It led me to believe that many of us have been looking at AI through this very fearful lens, as in AI is this big scary thing that is going to take over the world, that is going to make you irrelevant, that is going to erase your history. But who decides whether something is good or if something is evil? Are we allowing large tech companies to determine what is good or evil? Are we allowing large organizations and political organizations to determine what is good or evil? Are we leaving that up to AI? The next challenge that I realize is that the one element that we have been leaving out of this entire equation is the human element. We aren't afraid of the technology, we're afraid of each other. It is each other who determines how that technology is applied. So if we as humans are not applying this technology in a responsible manner, we'll have things like deep fakes. Where, hey, um, I'm going to utilize your face and now be able to get into your Facebook account, get into your phone, or how about I utilize this technology to now recreate historical experiences so that you can now have a more Im immersive experience. Or we're now worried about hate speech, but isn't AI just uncovering what is already there and showing us? So if we want to have a better world where we don't have hate speech, then we have to tame our tongues and the speech that we have. We talk about AI eliminating jobs, but what about in economies that are developing that can on-ramp much more quickly than industrialized societies who are trying to figure out how to use this technology? They say that the mother of all innovation is necessity, and necessity is something that these economies have. Well, we can talk about these different tools. We got ChatGPT and Claude and finding out about Latimer, which is a new AI that I didn't know anything about. But when we start to understand how these technologies work, we realize that these technologies only give us what we give it. 
We can talk about the ethics of artificial intelligence and we should do this responsibly, but what does responsibly mean? I challenge all of us to think about we should embrace the dangers of AI. Our ethics will determine what we believe and our ethics will determine how we react. They say that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. I'm not worried about how people use AI. I'm worried about how people think about AI in their lives. If you are not educated on these particular things, you're going to be in a situation where you have global inequality. We tie that education to this inequality. Those who know about AI and those who don't. Those who know how to prompt engineer and those who don't. Thus, adding to this inequality that we have said that we want to fight against. We can talk about regulations, but if it, the only people who are making the regulations are people who are at the top, they're not making the regulations for those who are at the bottom. Those who may be disenfranchised, those who may not be represented. So when we talk about regulations and understanding that we have a responsibility to pull one another up on the challenges that we face in utilizing this particular, te this particular technology to make the world a better place. We talk about, once again, that innovation, that spark, that thing that allows for us to bring new ideas to life. Are we, asking, are we allowing this innovation to shine bright in the darkest places? To find that innovation where others have not had access to it. But many of us are worried about Skynet. I'm not worried about Skynet. I talk nice to my chat GPT. You should talk nice to yours. But when we think about AI again, it has this weaponized connotation to it. But what about the great things that AI can provide for us? What are, how it can be a, a tool for mass generation, for generative AI, where we're creating new artworks, new works of, of, of literature, new ways of thinking, new ideas, tying different ideas together? Or are we gonna utilize this technology for mass destruction? Our challenge is not how to use this technology in an ethical way. Our challenge is to change our own internal ethics so that we became the change makers of tomorrow. Thank you.